Sponsored by Brilliant. Get smarter every day and save 20% via brilliant.org slash vector. I've been using Apple's new AirPods Pro for about a week now. I've gotten to talk with the product team, worn them on a plane, in coffee shops, out walking about. I've got a pretty good idea about the 10 audio cores in each ear, fit and feel, the comfort and controls, the isolation, and the transparency. But to help me out with the sound, I've once again gotten Lori Gill, managing editor of iMore and literal rock star, on the line. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is Vector. So AirPods Pro, let's start off with the design. I kind of like it. They're a little bit more severe, like the, the stem is more tapered. If I was gonna make an analogy, it would be the old AirPods are the Imperial Stormtroopers and the new ones are more first order. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way. Or the old ones are the um, on the base Stormtroopers and the new ones are the yeah. snow troopers, like something like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That way we can stay away from the prequel, from the from the sequels. In yeah. terms of design, I think while there, I mean, I know that there is a significant change in the design, but really they look a lot like the old ones. And I think from a marketing perspective, it's a really good idea because people want AirPods. They want to look like they're wearing AirPods. They're iconic. They're iconic, and so for them to basically continue the same look with a slight adjustment. I think it's a great idea. They, um, I think that they're actually designed slightly different to accommodate the new features, not to be a completely different design change. Yeah, because of the system and package, they can now get more of the components into the actual bud, meaning they don't need as much of a stem, but they're keeping it around for that handy dandy. The uh, force, yeah, the force sensor, which is... Yeah, the force pinch. Yeah, which is a great new <laughs> a new feature that I really do appreciate. And, and you're right, they could have just made it a bud, but I think giving us some physical controls was a really good idea. Instead of trying to tap your ear, which has always felt a little bit uncomfortable, it just you're just tapping on your ear, and this is a better way to do it. Yeah, and it's painful. If I do it on a bud, it just hurts. It's, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what do you think about the, uh, the silicon part of it, the, the tips part of it, because we've had those before, but usually they go over a plastic stem and Apple has mounted these flush. So you can pull them off and you can snap them back on, but they're letting the entire silicon part of it sort of mush and mold into your ear if that's what they have to do. So from my personal perspective, it is absolutely a, an, a wonderful new design and I am all on board with it. I think it feels great and it works great for me. So let's get into the comfort aspect then. I've been wearing these because you and I have had endless meetings uh, before right now. I've been wearing these for about three hours, four hours now, and I can feel that they're there, which is something I didn't really ever feel with the other AirPods because they don't actually go into your ear. They're sort of just inside the they're not on ear, but they're sort of on in ear, and these are in in ear. Um, so I can feel them more, but they don't bother me. I know what you mean. When I yeah. first put them in my ear, they're very light. They they don't touch anything. They're they're just kind of like this thing that barely sits there. But if if anybody experienced pain with AirPods. Uh, that was the real problem with them is that though they felt lightweight, they eventually started hurting the cartilage around your ear. So with AirPods Pro, because of the silicon tip, I now no longer feel any any feeling of pain from, from the hard plastic of the AirPods. I only feel the soft, mushy tip of the silicon tip. Yeah, and Apple said they took the thousands of scans that they got from the original EarPods, the old wired EarPods. They did thousands of additional scans from people all around the world to have a greater variety of ear models to work with. And then they made a heat map so they could tell where were the areas that were less comfortable, like the cartilage that you mentioned, but also the ones that added, with, that added stability so they could make a much better sort of design for them. I find these stay in better for me than the original AirPods, which stayed in better than pretty much any other in-ear uh, headphones I'd ever used. Previously with the standard AirPods, I've said this before, the left one would stay in fine, but the right one would fall out. These, the left one stays in really, really well. And the, white, the right one stays in pretty well. If I'm talking a lot or chewing a lot, it'll start to worm its way out. And I'll just have to push it back in like once every three or four minutes. The left one, maybe I'll adjust once every 10 minutes. But I think for like walking, for doing stuff like this, they're great. I think for like hardcore workouts though, I would still go with the Power Beats yeah, Pro. Yeah, so that definitely, I can give you a good example. When I wear AirPods in my ears, I, I would have to actually put my hair back because my hair would start to get like kind of in the way. And all I had to do was this and an AirPod would fall out of my ear. It was, it was 
really like I worried a lot so I would just start to wear my hair back in order to avoid that that does not happen with AirPods Pro they're solidly in my ear so that nothing I do they don't even start to slip out for me uh, Russell Hawley um, writer for iMore wrote a wonderful um, ha review of jogging a 4k with them in his ears and he noted yeah. that it took him um, uh, about three quarters of his jog before he started feeling like the, they were starting to slip. And at about three quarters, he, he said he did end up having to start pushing them back into his ear, I think three times total for the entire jog. So I, I do think that in terms of working out, all that jostling and especially all that sweating, the ear hook of the Powerbeats Pro is what keeps them solidly yeah. in your ear, which makes for better form factor in that way, yeah. Yeah, so if you're gonna parkour, definitely use that. But I also like, these are sweat and rain resistance, and I've been walking in the rain quite a lot and I have a hood on, but it, it still makes me feel more comfortable that I don't have to worry about, you know, relatively expensive ear pods just fizzling out because they get a like drizzle on them. Right, I'm, I'm certainly less nervous about getting any kind of liquid on them at all. Yeah, and the other thing is uh, they still have that awesome setup experience, which I think is really the killer feature of the AirPods. Anyone familiar with the first generation ones, it's essentially the same. The animation is a little bit longer because they describe more features, but you turn on your phone, the thing pops up at the bottom, you tap connect, and you're essentially done. And on the Mac, it's the, it's the menu bar, the Apple Watch just picks up. For standard Bluetooth stuff, you do have to still pair them like standard Bluetooth devices, but it's still for me the best setup process in the business. When you pair them with your first device, with your iPhone, let's say, and then you can just walk over to any one of your other devices. My my yeah. best experience was I, when I was testing them out, I was watching a movie on Apple TV and I just thought, oh, I'm just gonna switch over. And I thought, uh oh, I hope, I hope it's paired. I hope it's there. So I do the swipe down while the movie's still playing. AirPods Pro showed up right in the menu and I just clicked on yep. that and they immediately went to my ear. I didn't have to do anything to get to the point where those were connected to the TV. Same thing with Mac, same thing with iPad. Being able to just immediately, it's already there, you just have to click on it to connect it, is is such a pleasant experience. I don't ever want to use any other kind of Bluetooth headphones again. I, they all need to have an H1 chip for me just because the simplicity <laughs> of being able to have all of my devices connected is fantastic. So this is the part where I really have to lean on you though, and that's the sound quality. I've watched a bunch of reviews from a bunch of different people who all call themselves audiophiles. I have never caught the audiophilia. I'm not a golden ears, I'm more like a tin ears. So they sound good to me. Um, they sound better than AirPods to me, but what's your take on the sound? So yeah, they're definitely better than AirPods. I actually did a, a, a pretty deep dive um, testing of them where I listened to the same song over and over again so that I could listen amongst the different headphones that I have. The, the, let's do a, a quick um, sort of simile comparison here. AirPods to me sound like I'm listening to a band in a tin can. It's all okay. high end, it's all high. Everything is highs. I can tell that they're trying to bring in the mids and lows, but to me that also sounds, it sounds like faked mids and lows. It, yeah. There's definitely a difference there that it doesn't sound natural and warm. AirPods Pro, it sounds like I'm listening to a, a song where somebody put a blanket inside the kick drum. So it's warmer, it's thicker, but it's still a little muffled. It's still kind of, it, it sort of clips at that mid so you don't get that like thick, robust, bassy sound when you're trying to listen to music that has a heavy bass to it. Otherwise, it's very balanced. It's it's more balanced than the AirPods, absolutely. Uh, it does not have the high end. It has a very standard middle of the gro of the road thing, which which can be a little bit disappointing when you're listening to music that you really want to feel it kick in. It doesn't quite have that kick in. With something like uh, Powerbeats Pro, for example, I really feel that bass when it comes up. It hits me and it like brings in that that heavy sound that I'm looking for. So it, it, in terms of balance, it's great, but in terms of its ability to really still bring that that high quality audio that you're looking for, it's still missing it. It still has, the AirPods still have a ways to go before they can give us something like that. So my feeling is if you value the, the convenience 
as much as the sound. If you if you care about the total package, then just the ability to have AirPods with you all the time, put them in, pair them super easily, that's the selling feature here. But if you really do care desperately about the highest end audio quality, you're still better off with those big cans. That's the two things. You get your AirPods Pro or you get a pair of cans, like maybe the Studio 3 or something like that, or, or even the Studio Pro actually would be a better, a better type of headphones that you'd want to use. In terms of in-ear earbuds and, and how AirPods Pro compared to other in-ear um, earbuds that I've tried, they, they're, they're probably something more like a B compared to what an A would be. So they're, they're close, but they don't quite hit that mark in terms of just audio quality. But all of the other things that go along with having AirPods Pro make them absolutely 100% better. I personally am of the opinion, if I wanna to listen to that really warm, clear, deep, robust sound, I'm not gonna put it in my ears. I'm gonna put on a record and I'm gonna to listen to it in my full stereo. If I want portability, I want AirPods Pro because they let me take that music anywhere I go. And maybe it doesn't meet my standards 100%, but it meets it at about 80% and all the other things that gives me meet it at 100%, which makes it worth it in the mobile sphere. So have you had a chance to try out the mic yet? I've been doing some tests and I'm actually recording this video on the AirPods as well as with the fancy shotgun mic. So I'm gonna cut this segment in entirely with the AirPods mic so people can hear the difference. It sounds to me about the same as the AirPods mic. I know the stems don't come down quite as far, but Apple's doing some beam forming to try to isolate your voice anyway. But no one I've spoken to has complained on calls. They've all thought it sounded fine. Uh, I think everyone will say that the actual phone mics are better because they're they're better mics. But this this seems utterly serviceable, which sounds like I'm damning it with faint praise. But I mean that in sort of a good way. No, yeah, so it really just comes down to like what the technology can do and like beam forming microphones are, it's an impressive ability to round itself around your face and know, and know that it needs to capture that audio that comes from your mouth while cutting out a lot of the ambient sound around you. You know, if there's a car driving by, if there's a bus driving by, this doesn't pick it up very loud. So the person talking to me, they can hear me even though that bus is driving by. And at the same time, because of noise canceling, I can hear them when they're talking while that bus is driving by, so it works on both ends. All right, so let's get into the noise canceling then. That's the, one of the big marquee features of the AirPods Pro. I'm not the biggest fan of noise canceling because I, I find it kind of like I'm stuck in a little tiny box and I don't mind. I'm pretty good at concentrating through ambient noise, so I don't mind it as much. I did have a chance to test it uh, in New York at, on curbside, you know, those little curbside cafes. On the airplane, on my trip back, I've gone to coffee shops. Uh, we had 106 kilometer an hour winds here last week and the whole place was rattling and I put it in and it completely got rid of it. So for me, it works really, really well. I can't say again, it works as well as the big over the ear noise canceling headphones, but for buds, and I come from the Bose wired, not the wireless, but the Bose wired buds, to me, it was, it was fine. It was really, really good. Yeah, I think, uh, the, again, if you're gonna compare in-ear earbuds with over-the-ear or on-ear cans and, and talk about noise canceling, you're really kind of, you're talking about two completely different things. What I think Apple excels at is isolating this sound with noise canceling without you feeling like like, like, a, like you're in a box. That's <laughs> exactly what you're saying. That it it doesn't it actually feels a lot more natural um, to have them in and to be walking around. I hear myself a little bit stronger than I want to. It's almost like putting earplugs in and I can hear my own sound reverberating inside. But it it otherwise feels a lot more comfortable than other noise canceling headphones I've I've had. Yeah, I think the vent really helps. They have these vents on the outside that so, so you don't feel like you're sort of plugged up, which you do with some headphones. And also they have this transparency mode where you can you can do the force pinch and turn on transparency mode. And then the external mic picks up the outside the ambient noise and gives it back to you. But it doesn't sound like you're not wearing the headphones. It doesn't even sound like turning noise canceling off. It's almost crispier than reality. I know some people called it augmented reality, but it's not actually adding any data to it. It's just sort of filtering everything. I've, I've tested a couple of noise canceling headphones that do have their version of transparency, whatever they will call it. And to me, those always sounded almost like somebody 
was sticking a microphone out everywhere and and picking it up. So it was drawing in a lot of ambient sound that I I felt was too much. Yes. With AirPods Pro, it's more like it's more like it just opened up a a little spot in your ear to allow audio to come through so that you're still your music and your your you know audiobooks, your podcasts, they're still loud and clear, but you somehow are able to hear you know, if somebody knocks on your front door or something like that without it feeling like like a wash. Like with with other noise canceling headphones that have this kind of feature, it goes like this. <sighs> with these, that doesn't happen. So it, it, you can run this test. You can open up Bluetooth settings, which I still think is an odd place to have all this. I'd much rather there was like an AirPods, a persistent AirPods tab. But you can go into Bluetooth, your AirPods Pro, and you can run a sound tip test. And that'll tell you if there's a good enough seal to do all the fancy noise canceling stuff. And I passed the seal with the default uh, the default medium size tips on it, but they didn't feel like they were staying in my ear really well. So I tried the bigger ones, I tried the smaller ones, and now I have the smaller ones in and they fit much better. So I would just recommend that people, even if they pass the test, they still take the time to try all the different tips. Right, because the tip test is not to determine if it's comfortable, it's to determine whether or not you have a good seal. So I was the yeah. same way. I passed the tip te test with the medium pair but I knew medium is not going to be right for my ears. I took them out right away and I tip tested with small. Thank goodness it was a, a good seal. And that's what I use in my ears is a small size because um, it, it gives me a good seal and they're comfortable. So I completely agree. When you do that tip test, don't assume that it's saying this is the right pair for you. All it's saying is this does give you a good seal. Make sure that either the large or small isn't a better fit in, in terms of comfort. So to control this, you can either do that force pinch on the stem, you can use control center on your iPhone, on your Apple Watch, the menu bar on your Mac, uh, the Bluetooth controls on other devices. How intuitive and easy did you find just controlling your AirPods in general? At first, it was so bad that I thought I might have a bad pair. I couldn't get it to work at first. But after a little bit of playing around with it, I've, I've figured out exactly how to do it right. And I say this for two reasons. One, once I figured it out, it's absolutely fantastic. But two, I was surprised that Apple yeah. didn't do a better job of designing it with a, an interface that was better for users. They're great at that. Apple is great at user interface that is makes sense and is understandable and easy to use. And I was a little surprised that it took me probably a day of playing around with it and, you know, pinching it in different places. And Renee, even getting a recommendation from you about the best way to do it before it finally yeah. clicked on my head how to do it. Now it's, wor it's perfect. It works right every time. But surprisingly, I think Apple probably could have done a little better job at, um, designing that interface on the on the touch sensor so that it's just it just happens it just works it didn't just work yeah it can't go wrong yeah and also you can use Siri which I've actually used several times now because they have on board Siri like the AirPods too and they they answer right away so I'll just say transparency mode or I'll say something else and it works and I walk around the house just telling it to do stuff now you know like I, I keep saying this but it's true like just play turn on the Apple TV play this on the Apple TV turn off this do that and it's like not I don't have to yell at my home pod you know I can be in a completely different room and just whisper and all, all of it happens right I, I find myself turning the light on and off in my bedroom a lot because I'll be in there with the AirPods Pro in my ear and just think oh I need to turn the light on and then I'll just have Siri do it like oh, that's so great I didn't have to go get my phone or any or do anything on my wall Watch, it just automatically it just happens. It's such a great feeling to just have your AirPods be the Siri that you need to do everything. It's it's really great. It's a great experience. So battery life. Now the standard AirPods get like five hours. These get five hours without noise canceling on, four and a half hours with noise canceling or transparency on. And I often wear just one unless I really want that noise canceling experience. Like if I'm listening to audiobooks or podcasts, I only put one on, which means I can just switch back and forth basically indefinitely and plug in the case. But I did make deliberate tests here and I'm getting around four and a half hours, I think slightly longer than what Apple originally said. Yeah, I think I, I, I experienced the same thing. Uh, noise canceling, I kept them in my ears for four and a half hours. I went for it. And I think it was the same. It was like four hours 45, I think, is that yeah, something like I that. managed to keep it in that, you know, managed the, to keep the battery that long. So 
without a doubt, their their uh, judgment on how long noise canceling um, works is is dead on. You're you're not gonna you know discover that it was only three and a half hours or four hours. It it hits that four and a half hour mark plus. Um, in terms of the case, I haven't actually let the case completely run down. So bottom line, Lori Gill, what is your recommendation with the with the AirPods Pro? If you have been waiting around for a more comfortable pair of AirPods, go by right now. They are absolutely the most comfortable pair of AirPods in the world, in all existence, and I'm so happy that I finally can wear AirPods that are comfortable. It makes me so happy. They're even more comfortable to me than the Powerbeats Pro, which have been my favorite in-ear earphones for a long time now. If you already have AirPods and you you don't you know don't need anything, they don't hurt your ears. You're fine with what you've got. The up it's a it's an expensive upgrade just to add noise canceling to it. So if you're not really just I have to have noise canceling, your AirPods are fine. If you are if you have another pair of in ear um, noise canceling headphones that you really love, this the audio quality of this one it might be a disappointment for you. So maybe. Test them out first. Try the audio to dis- to determine whether or not you think it's a diff a, a, if the difference is good enough. But uh, I can I can definitely say these are I I I want to wipe all of my other he- headphones cans over the ear on ear, including my Powerbeats Pro. I want to throw them out in the garbage now just because of how comfortable and easy to use AirPods Pro are. I finally have a pair of AirPods that are comfortable fit and they sound good and and they look good and all that stuff. So I, I it's a win-win for me. I'm very, very happy with it. Yeah, the thing that I will always, like I've said this about AirPods before, if you come at them from an audio point of view, you're sort of setting yourself up for disappointment. And I don't mean that by saying that Apple deserves a pass on the sound not being the best sound in the universe, because I think Apple should absolutely attempt, try for, continue to progress towards the best sound in the universe. But what you're getting and what you're paying for are these little computational ear computers. And when you look at the price and say, well, $249 $249 is expensive for that sound. Or when you listen to them and say, well, they don't sound as good as this or that. Again, it's the silicon, the sensors, it's all the things that go into them that make them so much more than just raw drivers outputting sound. And if that's meaningless to you, if you could care less about how easy they set up and pair and switch between devices or that they stop playing when you put them in or out or that they can change modes when you squeeze, if you could care less about any of those things, just get the best sounding uh, headphones you can get, whether they're custom made in-ear earphones uh, like Jim Dalrymple, or they are giant cans that give you the best you know, studio level sound when you want them. But if you do value the convenience stuff, if you do value the instant pairing and the changing and all of those things that are driven by tiny little computers in your ears uh, and, you want ex- and the sound quality is acceptable to you, then I think these are the best uh, in-ear headphones ever made. And they're certainly, to echo what Lori said, they're gonna be the ones that I'm wearing going forward. You can find Lori Gill at Appaholic on Twitter and at imore.com every day. And if this brave new era of computational audio fascinates you as much as it does me and you wanna be part of it, Brilliant's got you covered. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that uses a hands-on approach with storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and so much more. There are over 50 interactive courses for you to dive into, including computer science fundamentals, perfect for high school or college students or early professionals who want to brush up on the basics and strengthen their knowledge of core concepts. And who knows, maybe make the computational part that takes the audio to the next level next. Because Brilliant is built for ambitious and curious people, the ones who want to better understand the world and help shape it. To support Vector and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, just head on over to brilliant.org slash vector and get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So that's AirPods Pro one week later. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, force pinch that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next show, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you think of AirPods Pro? Must skip, must still wait and see, or must get now, now, now. Thank you for watching and see you next video.